Welcome back to Route Double. And we last left off, we were starting to uh, purge the malice from Kazumi's memories. First one was uh, very simple, but I guess that was just an introduction, so to speak. Okay, at any rate, they had learned that three high schoolers were trapped in the facility, so as a result, they focused their efforts on rescuing them. But in the process, they came across a backdrop thanks to a screw-up by Watase. Without his memories and his skills, Watase was scared half to death. The group pressed on in spite of that. What awaited Kazumi and the others were the corpses of her co-workers and two researchers. <laughs> Thump. Kazumi felt like she'd just been hit in the head from that statement. Oh, Dojima had been a precious ally to her. Most of all, he was the one who rescued Nagisa from that collapsing apartment complex with Watase. Now we're getting somewhere. How could he be dead just like that? Why did this happen? What if they spoke in a hollow voice at that moment? Cosby was a bit bothered by the way he'd said that. Is he not sad at all? That's his squad mate of ten years or so lying dead there. How could he be so calm? Cosby couldn't hold that question back. It was true that without Watase's memories, Dojima was probably nothing more than a mere stranger to him. Kazumi still felt he was being too cruel. Why say not without really in indicating if he truly understood or not? Cosme sighed and continued. Cosme was deeply saddened by Watase's attitude. Natsuko thought to himself as he finished viewing that memory. Oh. All I can feel from this one is complete disappointment in Watase. I should be able to restore this memory to normal if I readjust her feelings. Simple enough. And naturally, we'd go all the way down. <laughs> what could go wrong? Nothing changed. Simple enough. Moving along. Reaffirm your trust in Watase? Natsuko repaired that false memory. This is clearly before anything twisted that disappointment into something more. Maybe this disappointment was just always there, and Salyu's words took that and twisted it into the truth. Kazumi hid just how shaken up she was and calmly answered. Hmm. There were two broken AD ampules lying on the floor deeper in. Dojima-senpai 
殺されなきゃなんないの考えすぎてはダメです檜山の遺体がないところを見ると彼はまだ生きているはずですせめてうんひとまず出ましょうかこれ以上ここに長居するのは私も辛いですから Took everything Cosme had to console Jun. Weird thing about these two memories is that it didn't really change much. I suppose the only thing that changed was that Cosme voiced her doubts. Her doubts are still there. Can we really actually fix hers? Go to Hyama then? Cosme and the others continued their search after they found Dojima's body. Just one hour later, they were faced with the death of yet another one of their co workers. It appeared that Hiyama had burned to death after both his legs had been broken. Cosby and Jun weren't alone. Anna, Okita, and Yuri were also incredibly shaken up by that sight. Cosme stuck to her firm attitude in order to calm the others down. This is the one where Watase actually steps up and tries to be a leader. Once Cosme had said that Jun was the next to tearfully speak. Jun choked back a sob. Cosby didn't scold her for calling her sis. Took everything she had to hold back a tumult of, of emotions raging in her heart. I have to endure it. I have to lead everyone. Just as Cosme thought that, Watase spoke up. モリベ、ちょっといいかリーダー交代だ。ここから先は俺がみんなを率いる。隊長ヒヤマ隊員の死は確かに残念だが、ここで時間を浪費するわけにはいかないんだ。Here's a naughty one to say. What he said was correct. He almost talked like he was blowing off the whole situation. Watase beat Kazmi to the punch before she could say anything. The stern declaration left no room for refusal. Kazmi found herself answering instinctively in the face of that overwhelming presence. Cosme couldn't read a single facet of Watase's emotion. It's like he's barely perturbed by Hyama's death. Is this another result of his amnesia? Or. An ominous sense of foreboding passed through Cosme's brain for a moment. She shook her head and drove that delusion out. I've got it all wrong. He's just being harsh because he's really worried about us. Cosme, deci Cosme decided to believe that. That's who thought to himself as he finished viewing that memory. Feels like she's lacking trust in Watase here. I need to better adjust her emotions. Oh, appeared those were the only memories that had possibly been altered. <laughs> Hmm, that's true. It's not like the altered memories were all that terrible. Anyway, Miss Tachibana should go back to her normal self if there are no more problems with her memories. 
Alright, what do we do this? Not to repair that false memory. Kazumi looked at Watase. No way, but I have to. I'm the leader right now. That's my responsibility. There's no way I can entrust all that to the hands of someone who's lost his memories. Watase beat Kam but Watase beat Kazumi to the punch before she could say anything. Kazumi shuddered at those words. His voice, the look on his face, they were that of the usual Watase. What is it then smiled and patted Cosby on the shoulder? He's probably saying that in the friendliest voice he could muster in an attempt to relieve their tension. Cosby was happy about that consideration. Jun then followed up as if to support Cosby's opinion. そうだね。いつまでも落ち込んではいられないよ。火は消えた。カードも見つかった。だからもう第6エリアまで私たちを遮るものはない。そうだ。その行きさ。What gave a satisfied smile. Cosby gently touched his shoulder. ありがとうございます。隊長。And smiled back. Group then moved on and searched areas 5 and 6. At one point, the factory ceiling collapsed, trapping Watase and Yuri under debris. Thanks to Watase's quick decisions and his well-toned body. Wow. Yuri was saved without a scratch. Goodness. Goodness. Watase then discovered there was a way to open the door to that cargo lift. The one potential, potentially good escape route they had. Using the nearby crane, they were successful in opening the cargo lift door. They had yet to find the survivors, but still. Six of us here can all escape in one piece at the very least. Cosme was grateful to Watase from the bottom of the, from the bottom of her heart for that. All right. Checked all the memories that could have been altered. Maybe something different will happen this time. Carefully looked at the memories, but it appeared there weren't any more in need of repair. <laughs> yeah, but there's still something we have to take care of first. Facing the spirit of subject end that haunted Kazumi's brain. Okay, so the difference between this and the past ones is that the final memory doesn't doesn't unlock until we purge all of her malice. Can't think of any other possibilities. Okay then, it's time for the final battle. Let's go. <laughs> and we're purified. Sleepers wake. Then Cosme discovered Subject N's body. Nanziko kept on reading Cosme's memories. He reached the point where she and the others had entered the cargo lift and discovered Subject N's body. Yes, this is it. This is where that memory is. Jun, the first to go into the cargo roof, lift room, screamed. Moribe, the rest of the group gra gasped and ran in after Jun. Way to find the body of a girl they'd never seen before. Everyone just stood absolutely still, overcome with shock. Everyone had been struck speechless by this unforeseen turn of events. It wasn't long before Kasumi. 
Vital check. Ran over to the girl with that declaration. She took off her vital checker and put it around the girl's wrist. Cosme laid the girl down and spoke. Jun hurriedly sat down next to the girl. Cosme, be Cosme performed cardiac massage, 15 compressions. Jun performed artificial respiration, two rescue breaths. The girl didn't respond. Let's go watch the whole thing through Cosme's eyes. This is when this, this is when Miss Tachibana was infected by malice. And shouldn't that girl be showing up any second now? Remnant of Subject N's spirit must be in here. Though he thought that, Subject N still hadn't shown up. It seemed like Watase was saying something behind her, but she ignored him. She held her hands with strength as she continued the CPR compressions. Fifteen compressions. Two rescue breaths. Fifteen compressions. Two rescue breaths. Fifteen compressions. Two rescue breaths. Hmm? Before long, the, feature of the, the features of the mysterious girl's face overlapped with the face of someone long gone. Cosme unconsciously voiced her thoughts into words. <laughs> Jun gasped at that moment. <laughs> But Cosme's thoughts had come to a halt. Jun's voice grew distant and her words carried no meaning. Nagisa, Nagisa, please come back. This can't be happening. Not when we've just now reunited. I don't want this. Thoughts became less and less, less, and less coherent. But, that, but at that moment... <laughs> Jun's voice brought Cosme back to reality. Cosme was astonished when she heard Watase's faint whisper. Huh. I just lose my mind for the first time in years. She thought the absolute loss of sanity she displayed in those weeks after Nagus's death would never resurface again, but... Careless of me. I have to be calm. Be calm, be calm, be calm. This girl isn't Nagisa. Pull yourself together. Cosme took a deep breath and slowly turned back to Watase. You've been trying to act like your normal self. For some reason, everyone looked at Cosme with what appeared to be fear on her face. She spoke calmly once again in order to hide the irre irregularity in her emotions. The gloom swirled around in her heart. This girl isn't Nagisa. There's no mistaking that she's a victim of this accident. Her life has been lost. Cosme was about to leave the room with that thought. She suddenly heard a voice behind her. <gasps> Cosby turned around in surprise. For a moment she thought the girl had returned to life. All she saw was the girl's corpse. Like before, there were absolutely no signs of life from the body whatsoever. No one answered her calls. I must be imagining things. Not calm at all right now. I mustn't, I mustn't let my desires twist the facts. Cosme finished per persuading herself and looked away from the corpse. Natsuka was bewildered by that bewildered by that memory. What is this? Is this, is this what Miss Tachibana really experienced? Subject N had survived until this time and, man and manipulated everyone's memories. So if Cosme's memories had been distorted, that all meant her only her memories before this point in that in time would have been altered. However, there was no floral scent in this memory. 
The spirit of Subject M that had shown up in Wadase Ukita and Jun's minds hadn't made an appearance. What's going on? Is she, is she in another memory, another memory later on? Natsuko thus continued to read through Kasumi's memories as he pondered on the meaning of that mystery. It was only a little bit later on that yet another strange event occurred. It was in a memory right after Yuri had vanished. Kasumi and the others hadn't been able to locate Yuri after she suddenly ran off. What as he spoke up behind Kasumi, but in a voice full of worry. AD no Koka wa mada ichi jikan chikaku aru. Sore made ni sagasa na kya mazui. Uh oh. She's she's zoning out. What if his voice grew distant again? Why? Where did she go off to all by herself in such a dangerous situation? Cosme muttered that and went running off. Then heard the same voice she noticed earlier. Kazumi's hearing voices in her head. That's a startling revelation. The voice sounded as though it were echoing inside her head. We did see evidence of that after she snapped, of her talking to someone in her head. The voice sounded as though it were echoing inside her head. Cosme gritted her teeth and mentally replied to it. I know. You're an auditory hallucination, aren't you? It's my guilt at failing to save you that's causing me to hear this voice, isn't it? There's no other way. The voice went quiet. Cosme endured her guilt and continued talking in her mind. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Make sure you get a proper burial once this is all over. So please don't blame me right now, at the very least. She couldn't hear the auditory hallucination anymore. That brought Cosme both relief and a slight twinge of loneliness. Uh, hold on. This is strange. What's happening? Yuri's voice echoed in Natsuko's head while he reeled from astonishment. <laughs> yeah, what's the deal with this auditory hallucination? Why is that happening? <laughs> No, that's impossible. I mean, subject N's already dead. That shouldn't be happening. What's more, there was no floral scent in this memory either. It's an inexplicable phenomenon that was neither memory, manip memory manipulation nor telepathy. Natsiko knew fully well what it was. I'll tell you that Miss Tachibana. New suspicion was born into Natsiko's mind. It's only a little bit after that memory. Yet another bizarre event occurred. It was from when Cosme was resting in the surveillance room after her leg got injured. She was keeping an eye on the monitors by herself. She figured that the least she could do while she was recovering there was check the monitors. She couldn't muster much effort into it. To think that there could be a murder in this facility even at this very moment. Fear and trepidation began to take root in Cosme's mind. This was the first end, end, first end disaster she'd ever encountered. She figured all she had to do was focus on rescue, eff rescue efforts like always. The situation had changed far too quickly. She was reminded of what Anna had said when they discovered the cargo lift had been sabotaged. This was no ordinary disaster. Someone meant for this to happen. June had also said that there were terrorists hiding in the city. To be honest, a part of her agreed with the both of them. She didn't breathe a word of it and adamantly denied the possibility. The situation's already harsh. What we have to fear the most here is everyone starting to jump to conclusions. Starting to jump at shadows, pardon me. We can't let ourselves fall prey to that. We must work together to get through this. If we don't, we may not survive. But if she were to follow Anna and Jun's suspicions to their logical conclusion with the knowledge that only nine people were in this facility, that would lead her to one damning suspicion. One of us is the culprit. That's exactly why Cosme could not admit to the existence of a killer. In that case, who killed that girl? Why did Miss Yuri vanish? Did the real culprit already escape? 
Her doubts swelled up and filled her heart. But Kasumi shook her head and denied them. No, I mustn't think that. Letting myself fall to pieces right now. It's too dangerous to let these two these thoughts control me. Just as Kasumi tried again to convince herself, a voice called out from behind her. <gasps> Cosme turned around in shock. Hello, but then she doubted her eyes. <gasps> a gasp emerged out of her mouth. The girl who had been lying dead by the lift earlier was standing right next to the door. <gasps> Astonishment stole the words from Cosme's lips. The girl took that moment to speak up. <laughs> She had the same voice as the auditory hallucinations she heard earlier. An unbelievable thought overwhelmed Kasumi. Yure. If she's not a ghost, then does that make her an illusion? If that's the case, has my sanity already deteriorated that much? What she was looking at didn't seem to be an it didn't seem like an entity as vague as either a ghost or an illusion. The girl continued as Kazumi struggled with struggled with her confusion. <laughs> あなたが気に入ったのかも。とにかくあなたに教えておきたいことがあるの。生き残るためには周りを疑わなきゃダメだって。疑う誰を？自分以外みんな。特にそう。渡瀬さんをね。何を言ってるの自分でもわかってるんじゃないかな。あの人の記憶喪失には不自然な点があるって。それは私ね、思うんだけど、ひょっとしたら犯人って。Cosby instinctively shouted in response to that, to that statement. Well, only expression suddenly appeared on the girl's face. She is talking like Nagisa. So she's going to convince Cosme that she's really Nagisa, isn't she? Maybe, or maybe this is honest. It fits her character. Girl said that and then smiled. But right when, but when Cosme shouted that, the door opened. Oh! That's what this was. 
Cosme came back to his senses and looked at the door. Standing there were what I say, Juden, everyone, and the survivors. This certainly does explain what was going on in here. We thought she was talking on the radio, but no. Cosby concealed all emotion and expression on her face and answered calmly. She didn't want to let them know what had just happened. Not by any means. Natsika was speechless. You could hear Yuri's hollow voice. Yeah. Natsiko answered dumbfoundedly. As Tachibana was seeing a phantom subject N. Just like how Natsiko had seen Yuri's phantom for nine years. Cosme too had been constantly seeing an illusion so lifelike she was convinced it had to be real. Why was it only Miss Tachibana that saw a phantom? I mean, this is nothing like what happened with Watase. Subject N's tone and manner of speech here were also clearly different from Cosme's. Much like how Yuri's phantom hadn't talked like Natsuhiko. <laughs> Subject N in this case really was talking like Nagisa? I have no idea how we're going to fix this. No, I don't think it's enough to explain everything. We couldn't come up with a clear answer. Natsuko read more of Kazumi's memory. Next time the illusion showed up. It's after Kazumi and Watase had realized there were no fires in Area N. Tried escaping through the drainage pipe. And failed. It was right when Salyu told her that Watase was a terrorist. Ah. Cosby instinctively shook Salyu off with all her might. Watase ran over to Salyu and checked her condition. Oh god, what have I done? Cosby walked up with, to Watase with Salyu in blank shock. Though she was relieved to hear that, Cosme thought about Salyu's words once again. This man is a terrorist. He attacked us last night and this morning as well. Everything that's happened here is all his fault. Even you should have questioned that idea several times. Those words brought her heart great pain. Her body began to shake in fear. What if they sounded confused? Cosme wrapped her arms around herself to stop her shivers and tried to answer him. I trust you. That was what she wanted to say. But at that moment, a voice echoed in her head. Hello there. The girl from earlier was standing right next to Kasumi before she even realized it. The girl looked at Watase along with Kasumi and spoke. Thought flashed through Kasumi's brain when she heard that. When I think about it, that BC rejection group has been causing quite a number of incidents recently. Who caused the Great Rokubei City arson all those years ago have committed yet another act of terrorism? If that's the case, then why would a BC rejection group attack this facility? The girl answered that question. Cosby realized it at that moment. Impossible. Is this place a BC research facility? Now that she thought about it, Watase didn't like BC. 
That was why she had barely ever discussed the topic with him. She never mentioned how she had that ap how she had aptitude, albeit not much of it. Nor did she mention her sister's case either. So for some reason, Watase's hatred for BC grew worse. He became a terrorist and attacked this facility. And Ojima and Hyama tried to stop him and were killed by him for it. Wrong, 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 wrong. Between those researchers and that girl, also got caught up in it and all got caught up in it all and were. She didn't want to believe any of it. But if it were, weren't true, then why had Salyu called Watase a terrorist? Why did Watase have a gun? Why had he lied? She couldn't come up with a single solid answer. And if he committed any crimes, it was before he lost his memories. Which means he forgot about his sins due to his amnesia. Those thoughts drove Cosby to look at Watase with fear. <laughs> サリの言ったことを信じてるのか。バカな。俺がテロリストのわけがないだろう。記憶喪失だろうとなんだろうと。俺が以前からずっとレスキュー隊員だったってことは、お前たちが一番よく知ってるじゃないか。He was right. He was a strict yet kind man who always kept on fighting to protect people's lives. What if he was supposed to be a true rescue worker who taught Cosme how to live her life in a strong manner while her heart was still scarred from Nagis' death? My hero is a murderer. Despite that, Cosme asked Watase one final question. <laughs> that's it, that's your question. That's the end, end of cross examination. <laughs> Just technically correct. だったら無線は通じていたということですよね。だけど、だけど隊長、私はね、その少し前に隊長に無線通信を試みていたんですよ。同島たちの無線は通じたのに、どうして私からの無線には出なかったんですか何か理由があって、人的に出なかったんじゃないですかお、お前、いつからそんなこと考えていたんだ隊長が記憶が少し戻ったと言った時から、地下に降りた理由を
They formed a fierce whirlpool of malice that Natsuki was dumbfoundedly floating in. What should I do? How can I save Miss Tachibana? Hikori, Right, then I'll go search through more memory. Why would Natsiko thought that? Kazumi's head. What? It was filled with the sound of a woman's echoing voice. Hmm? It wasn't Subject N's voice. It belonged to none other, th other than the person whose mind Natsiko was linked to at this moment. Is Tachibana? Oh shit! <laughs> Neither of them have ever experienced the target of their sense of sympathy talking back to them while the process was still underway. That wasn't all. Even more bizarre phenomena occurred. What? Oh no. She's reading us. What? Kazumi! What? A vague Natsuko had seen and heard up to this point in time flashed through his head. Oh shit. She's reading us. Do you remember that phenomenon? It was those high-speed flashbacks he had when Yuri read his memories the morning right after he arrived at Lebo. Why are, my mem why are my memories being read? He had no clue what was happening. Kazumi then continued. So you got that oh no. Hmm? That was the same thing Yuri had said back then. Natsuko was assaulted by intense anxiety. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Savage malice surged forth with that voice. Oh god. It suddenly started worming its way to Natsiko's mind all at once. Ah. 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 Natsiko then realized he was in danger. Ah and cut his link to Cosby's mind. Okay. Oh boy. Ah! The Abyss stares back, baby. Natsuko couldn't help but scream as he returned to reality. Marshall called out to him in surprise. どうしたの、ナトシコ? <laughs> In confusion, they both looked at Kazumi, then spoke in a chilling voice. Oh no. I've a really weird feeling here. Did Kazumi get completely mind jacked by. Subject N? Oh no. Wait, okay. Kazumi-san? <laughs> Natsuko was shocked. How did Kazumi know that? I thought Miss Tachibana was unable to use BC. As soon as he thought that, at the very least she had a low aptitude, a certain thought rose up from the back of Natsuko's mind. Huh? Kazumi was unable to use BC in the past, because her aptitude was low. Aptitude was genetic, meaning it normally did not change. There's just one circumstance that can overturn that rule. Same circumstance that Natsiko and Yuri encountered when they sneaked into Labo. Oh, shit. Environment filled with WX particles. In other words... Everyone gasped at that statement. Ooh. 
Cosme gave that reply with a smile. Beautiful yet somehow sinister smile, one that sent shivers down the spines of all who beheld it. Uh, I'm scared. Cosme looked at the empty air beside her as she answered. Phantom Subject N was probably standing right there in her in her eyes. Hmm, doubt. Cosme's clouded eyes were tinged with the guilt the glint of murderous intent. Anna then took her gun out. But the very next moment, a tremendous brain shaking voice echoed throughout the room. Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy. Everyone but Kazumi screamed at the sound of that voice. And Anna cowered and held her head as she struggled to keep her gun trained on Kazumi. Kazumi now has mind crush powers. We're, we're, we're gonna be hard pressed to deal with this situation now. That voice with the same technique Natsiko had used in self defense against Watase to stop him in his tracks. Brain damage through high output telepathy. Oh god! By the time Natsiko grasped what had happened, Kazumi grabbed Anna's body and hurled her away. Anna's back slammed into the ground and bounced. And in what seemed like the blink of an eye, Kazumi picked up Anna's gun. She then gazed at the others as they groaned in pain from their headaches. This is terrible! Miss Tachibana woke to BC while infected with malice! It's highly possible that connecting my mind to hers will just end with her infecting me and with the malice instead. Natsuko came to the realization of just how absurdly dangerous Kazumi was. Extraordinary BC ability, a thoroughly tempered work rescue worker physique, and a gun! There's no way for them to win. Kazumi spoke to them. <laughs> あなたたちとは全く無関係のことです。邪魔さえしなければ手出しはしません。その大切な女の子たちをしっかり守ってあげてください。Cosmi slipped by Natsuko in his confusion and left the surveillance room. Leaving only Natsuko, Yuri, Mashiro, and the fallen Enna. Just then, Marshall spoke up to break the break them all away from their numb state. Natsuko racked his numbed brain to think. She said she wouldn't kill them, which meant. And Ukita. Well, I mean, she, that's correct. But when Cosme was strangling Watase, she said she had to kill him to protect his good name. It seemed like her objective had changed. However, it didn't seem likely that she'd go out of her way to kill Ukita to protect the honor of his, of his name, too. Think, why would she target those two? The main thing Watase and Mr. Ukita have in common is that they're both members of Q. Does Miss Tachibana have a reason to hate Q? Yeah, wait. That person said that I mean, I think, it's, I mean, I think it's pretty clear now that Subject N is actively guiding her. When asked that question, Natsuhiko finally realized something. The Subject's naming scheme followed a very simple... Oh no, it's... 
It is true. That there was something Subject N herself misunderstood. A quivering voice leaked from Natsuhiko's lips. Oh no. <laughs> oh shit. Oh no. To reach that epiphany. Natsuko fell into despair at the sheer cruelty of the truth. Meanwhile, down in Area Zero, Odyssey's group was faced with a different type of despair. Oh no. We're in danger. Odyssey's exhausted voice reverberated through the room. Odyssey and the others had taken on the Tetral Bomb all by themselves. It managed to recover the remove the digital protection and open the cover in just eight mere minutes. But Jun then groaned. It was a far trickier devil than Watase and the others had imagined. It was a detonator built with a nested structure where the fuse was covered with gunpowder that was surrounded by yet another fuse. Do fuses! I don't know where that came from, I apologize. Even the slightest mistake in the disarming process would set off a chain explosion.時間をかければ何とかなるってもんじゃない。X線でも使って内部を確認しつつ解体しないとどうにもならない白物だよ。装備が少なすぎる。いや、風装備でも解体できるかどうか。それでも一か八かで危険すぎるよ。ちょっと
六名学園への入学が決まってたから。Jesus。そんな。Elevator doors opened in sync with Watase's cry. Startled, he and the others got on it. Judy continued murmuring on, the, on their way up. She really did. Wow. What the hell did they do to her? It turned her hair white. Just from the. What sort of experiments went on that left her like this? Testament as to what the hell Lapo did to her. Awful. It's awful. Her voice echoed sorrow sorrowfully through the dim elevator. Then I. I caused Nagisa's death through my own terrorist plot. Well. I. Yeah. Yeah. If you hadn't agreed to this to try and. Break out the test subjects without any foreknowledge of the shit that was going on with enification and the, that whatnot, which is entirely Labo's fault for keeping secret. But Jesus. He does bear some fault for this. As much as Subject N, as much as Nagisa herself incited the malice spreading that led her death, it was very much uh, On one hand, it would not have happened if Watase had not tried to break a bust out the test subjects. On the other hand, it would not have happened if Labo didn't willingly fuck with her head enough until she was fully enified and just a malice bomb. So, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Kazumi thought her sister was dead all these years, and today she was finally able to reunite with her. Only for Nagisa to die, then and there. Kazumi ever realized that. I when his train of thought reached that point. The elevator arrived in Area N. A light shined upon the team. A shadow stood in the midst of that white darkness. <gasps> what as he looked at that shadow with wide eyes? Standing there was none other than Kazumi. Well... Time to pay the piper. Goddamn. Holy shit. <laughs>